Today in Tinkercad, we're going to create a customized mug. Once you're signed into Tinkercad and you're at your dashboard, you're going to click the blue Create New Design button. That's going to bring you into a brand new workspace. And the first thing we're going to do when we get here is change the name. So up here where Tinkercad gave it a name, we're going to click on that and you're going to call it your name and mug. Now, to create our mug has just a few steps. We're going to begin with the main base of the mug, which is going to be a cylinder shape. So I'm going to grab a cylinder, drag it to my work plane. Once I get it to my work plane, I'm going to adjust the size. There's no specific size for this, but we want to make it a little bit bigger. The key thing to remember is that both numbers for your shape should be the same size. We want a cylinder, not an ellipse. We want it to be a perfect circle. So you can either drag it out carefully and try to match up your numbers, or you can just click in the boxes and type the numbers in. I'm going to go with size 27. You can choose your own numbers for this. Now I have the base of my mug. I need to hollow out the center. I'm going to come up to the whole cylinder and I'm going to drag it onto the work plane. Now I'm not going to change the size of this because this is already a little bit smaller than my cylinder. So I'm just going to drag it in, put it as close to the center as I can. Don't worry about getting it exactly in the center because next I'm going to show you how to perfectly align it so it's centered exactly. Once I have them pretty close, I'm going to drag a box over the top of them with my mouse and I want to look up near the group button. We're not clicking on group button now, but in the same menu up here, we're looking for this one that looks like a little bar graph. This is our align tool that lets us line things up perfectly. I'm going to click on align and I'm going to see these black dots appear. The black dots along the bottom, not the ones going up the side, but the ones along the bottom are the ones I'm looking for. On this side, I want the center button. And then in the one right here, same thing, center again. And that will perfectly center that cylinder in the middle. Once I've done that, I'm going to click off and I'm back with my perfectly centered shapes. Now before we group these together, it's really important that we make sure our whole cylinder does not go all the way through to the bottom. That would make a pretty terrible mug because everything would pour right out of it. So what we need to do next is raise this hole up just a little bit so that it leaves a solid bottom. I'm going to click on the hole in the center and I want to look for the black triangle at the top here. This is my lift button and I'm going to use that to lift it up just a little bit. Now if I rotate underneath, I can see there's no hole at the bottom and it's sticking up just a little bit over the top. So that should give me a pretty decent mug. So now I'm going to group them together. I'm going to drag a hole over both, or drag a box over both, and then I'm going to come up here and click on my group button. Once I've done that, you should now see I've got the inside of my mug hollowed out. Our next step is to put a handle on our mug. And none of the shapes in our basic shapes really works for a handle. So I'm going to click here where it says Tinkercad basic shapes. And I want to look for the section called shape generators. I'm going to click all on shape generators. And if I scroll down, I'm going to see some numbers at the bottom. I want to click through until I get to page eight. On page eight up at the top is a shape called donut slice. This is going to be our handle. So I'm going to drag it out onto my work plane. Now, right now it's laying flat. So I'm going to need to use my rotation arrows to get it where I want it. I want to look for this rotation arrow here, which will rotate it up. And I'm going to lift it up like this about 90 degrees.
and now I need to be able to attach it to my mug. It's a little low to the ground, so I'm going to lift it up a bit and then move it into my mug. This part can be a little bit confusing because of the way it moves once it's rotated. What I find easiest to do is kind of look at it from the top or the side and use my arrow keys on the keyboard to adjust where it goes. This is much easier than using the mouse. We want to make sure it overlaps into the mug a little bit. Otherwise, if we were to print it, it would just fall off. I'm going to rotate it around a bit and make sure it fits properly. I can see that it's sticking out a bit here. So I can either lower it or grab my height button and shrink the height down a little bit. You can also adjust the width of it here a bit and get your handle looking the way you want. Always remember to rotate it around and look at it from a couple different angles to make sure you're happy with it. Once you have your handle the way you want, we're going to group them together. So draw a box over both shapes and click your group button. For the last part, you get to customize your mug. We have a ton of different shapes you can add to the front and sides of your mug. Feel free to use the shape generator to look for some different shapes you might want to use and add them to your mug. So I'm going to go through, see what some of the interesting shapes are here. I don't want anything that's going to stick out too far, but there are plenty of options. I'm going to grab a mustache shape over here, bring it onto my work plane, shrink it down to the size I want, And then I can use my rotate arrows to rotate it the direction I want. Once I have it aligned the way I want it to be, I'm going to rotate my view around here and again use my arrow keys to put it where I want it. Now this one is a bit wide, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink it in a bit, lift it up with the triangle, and then position it on my mug where I want it. So now I have a mustache mug. When you're done, you're going to draw your box over it and group all of them. And once you've grouped them, Take a screenshot for your portfolio, and then we're going to click Export. We want to make sure we have everything in the design. Click STL, and then save that download and put it into Google Classroom.